Hello folks, this is Avidan, and may God's peace, truth, grace, and love be with you all. Um, so we're going to continue um, on talking about the narcissism uh, within Jeff C. and the abuse that he is uh, parting on to others. Um, now, once again, I'll just say, not looking to hurt anybody, looking to help those that can listen. Um, so, what we're going to talk about now is the saving grace for narcissists. It's called forgive and forget tactic. Okay, they withdraw when they realize that they've done something impolite because they believe something impolite means um, lack of respect, um, lack of remorse because they don't really understand what remorse and respect are, right? They don't have that in their arsenal, so they believe that politeness is, is the substitute for that. Uh, or is synonymous with it, right? So once they realize that they've crossed a boundary, once they realize that saying curb stomp stomping is wrong, uh, once, they, once they see that something is up and that people are picking up on this, what they try and do is say that they, they want to leave, okay? They, they withdraw, they, they give a dramatic entry, exit, uh, and in hopes that you say, oh no, come back, we need you, we love you, you know, it's okay, and that you'll forgive and forget the things that they've done without them ever having accountability um, one great quote by Gail Myers that you can find, the narcissist game of forgive and forget consists of you forgiving and forgetting without their repentance so they can avoid accountability and keep on abusing you without any consequences. And I'm just going to read out a blog. Um, this is, seems to be a little bit personal, but I think it also has some great information in it. So I'm just going to read this out to you. Um, in my experience, some people love to try and beat you to death with the Bible. Of course, it's usually redefined terms and biblical texts taken out of context being used as a pretext. That's what cults do. And in my opinion, a family led by a narcissistic personality, and it could be a family, it could be a, a truth community, it could be whatever, um, by a narc, uh, is a little cult family. Um, so I guess it should not be any big surprise. Forgive and forget must be one of the all-time favorites for abusive members um, and those who enable them. So I would like to address it. I think the Bible is pretty clear that God wants us to forgive, but that does not necessarily mean what you may have been taught. It can easily become forgive and forget that has been handed down in my family for generations, um, but only to certain members, of course. You are required to forgive and forget, period. No, that's it. Don't need to talk about it. Don't need to address or hold anybody accountable. Just forgive and forget. This is usually followed by the implication or suggestion that you returned for more abuse in order to prove you for forgive and forget. Otherwise, you are the one accused of being mean, unforgiving, or unchristian-like by the narcissist and her flying mon monkeys. Narcissist abusers of all kinds, as well as those who enable them, would love for you to believe that this is what forgiveness means. Among other things, this confuses the fundamental difference between forgiveness and reconciliation. Forgiveness takes one, you. Reconciliation takes two. However, in some situations such as relationships involving ongoing abuse, reconciliation is not desirable, in which case you can forgive without forgetting or reconciling. So reconciling is when the person who is being abusive, in this case it's Jeff, um, is actually repenting, is actually addressing, identifying how they've sinned, okay? And then they admit that to other people, and then they say that they're truly sorry, okay? You've never heard Jeff say sorry. <laughs> so don't expect reconciliation to happen with these types of people. And it's not necessarily his fault. Like I said, it's due to a shame that started in, in very early in on their lives, and whatever that sin, whatever that shame created, right? Now it has uh, an alter ego that, that needs to believe that they're perfect, right? So they'll never say sorry. They'll never be truly um, identify. They'll never identify truly their sins. They might say that they're not perfect, that nobody's perfect, and you're, I was being a dick, you're being a dick, and we're all being a bit of a dicks, right? They might say that. That's what Ricky says on Trailer Park Boys. But, um, but it doesn't ever identify where they went wrong, okay? Because that would actually have to, by doing that, they'd admit that they're not perfect. They can actually, like, they, they wouldn't be able to believe in their minds that they're not perfect, right? So 
that's the difference with that. The Bible provides instructions on forgiveness, reconciliation, or in some, con- uh, some cases, parting ways in different situations, such as when there is repentance on the part of the offending fellow believer or when there is not repentance. Um, in Luke 17, 3, it says, If your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. This is to honestly, frankly, politely speak as you tell a person how you feel that he has wronged you. Um, it does not say a thing about stuffing your normal human response of anger, pretending you forgave, forgetting and returning for more abuse. Forget does nothing but play into the n- denial and the rest of the pretend world of a manipulative narc. Abusers often gaslight ambient abuse um, and those who uh, do especially like to reinforce this belief Oh, sorry. And those who do especially like to reinforce this belief because it fits right in with them, pretending the abuse did not happen. There is no mention of repentance on the narcissist's part, but the focus is on your requirement to forgive and forget. This is a deadly trap, in my opinion, and one, my narcissistic mother had uh, me in for several years as a very young adult. Um... Besides allowing abuse, God never intended us for in, uh, God never intended for us to endure. It can also lead to enormous anger toward God. Um, that you're just being punished all the time. Now this guy, this gets really into like family things, which is unfortunate. Where we're there's no one really talking about the narcissist on social media, on things like YouTube and, and uh, Facebook and all these things, and it's allowing this stuff to happen. Now, I think it, it it would be a great thing that the um, the powers that be the New World Order would continue to allow that they never address the the, the kinds of things that people um, possessed like Jeff are doing. Um, so you're kind of stuck reading family things a lot of the time, which is really, you know, it, it can get confusing, right? But there's still a lot of good in that. So basically what's going on is he's exhausted all of his, all of his other ways. He's, he started trying to ridicule, shame people, um, then it will turn into just an outright turning the tables on Steve Keys, even though they, he didn't really have any definitive proof. And then he called everybody a liar and a shill and all this stuff. But, but he knew, he knew that this was a losing battle. So this is what narcissists do. They, that's their exit so that they can get back in and then get the control back in. Because that's what they want. It has nothing to do with being sorry. It has to do with making sure they can keep that control, right? And this is why it's really important to talk about because everybody just kind of, well, not everybody, I'm not, me, I for one before, I should just say that. <laughs> and I, I think I do see other people doing it. Not everybody, of course. But um, getting back to it, there's a lot of people out there that do just accept this. It, it's, oh yeah, it's kind of all blown over. It's okay. When, when really nothing, the, even if he does say sorry, it's not, it's not a real sorry. There, there's only one way that he's going to be able to get out of this. Okay. And, and that's coming to Christ. It, it really, really is. Okay. Go look at the success rates of treatment for people with NPD, especially people with the severity of which he has. Okay. Um, he has every sign of a, of a nurse. Maybe one he doesn't have. Maybe one out of the nine he doesn't have. Maybe. At least not a severe form of it. He has all of it. Okay? The, the, it's so severe. Psychologists, psychiatrists, even though it's not psychiatrists that really do it, but, but psychotherapists specifically are the only chance they have. The, the success rate is so minute, okay, that it, it will just... No. It just... You, you can't say that it's treatable. You can't say it with any certainty whatsoever. Um, There's only one way out of this. That's that's going to the Lord, man. That's going to the Lord and and telling him, listen, I I judge others. I think that I can call a crisis actor. I think that anybody who disagrees with me is a liar and a shill and, and a horrible person. Anybody who goes along with my game, I placate them and I just... Um, uh, I idealize them until they disagree with me, and then they're back to being a lump of crap. Um, it, it takes that. It, it really does. It, it takes going to the Lord, saying your sins, saying that you are a sinner. And th- the chances of that, too, with the narcissist, because narcissists all be- like, narcs believe that they're God. Okay, whether they notice that, whether they know it or not, 
they believe they are without sin. Okay, they, they believe that they can judge other people based on outside appearances. They believe that they can they are God. Okay, when you look at the, the psychology of one, that's what they believe. Um, it's very tough. And and this is where for you guys, I recommend you pray for him. Okay? Uh, I might do a video or we'll we'll do that. Okay, but I pray for him every day that God will break his hardened heart, okay? But no, when I'm, I'm being asked, and this wasn't the reason why I created this video, I thought this was very important to talk about, um, I noticed that when I made my last video, I had someone mention to me, um, they said that I was just taking this, I should have uh, brought, uh, handed out my hand uh, to him on this, no. There, he has no repentance for this. Whether or not he was giving me good words on the Steve Keys uh, video saying that I'm not a liar or whatever, that, that's, that had nothing to do with reconciling the differences that we've had, the things that, at which he has um, done. Um, and I forgive him for these things, but I'm not going to go back to anybody who, doesn't, who only respects someone that they see use for. Okay? That's not what I'm going to do here. That's not what you should be doing here. Um, you see this person has called you liars and shills. Um, this isn't the first time at all. Okay? Um, it's not going to be the last time. If you don't, unless um, truly an act of God takes place, it's not going to happen. Okay, um, this guy's not here for the truth. He's not here to help you. He's not here to give you a voice. He's here to take that voice from you. He's here to hurt. He's here to use you. He's here to take the name of truth and have personal gain from it. And when you start trying to hold him accountable for that, he's just going to run away. And he's going to play the forgive and forget game. He's going to try and gaslight people. He's going to try and get people to go against this Steve Keys guy or, or, or whatever um, to, take the, to take the heat that he's getting for his actions, his own actions. Okay? They're, he's trying to take that away from him. These things are not acceptable. Okay? It's not... These are, uh, I f like if I, if I actually played into that game, I would be going against my own sanity and I'd be going against my own conscience. I know the difference, okay? There's no apologies with this guy, no real ones, okay? And I love this guy. I love everybody out there. But when there's no talking to people, there's no talking to them until they repent. This should be what you guys see as well. And I feel bad for those who, who can't see that, who are under the mind control. Not everybody is. That's not what I'm saying here. But there are many people who are. And whether or not they know it, they're under psychological abuse. And we need to start helping these people. Because what this creates is a cult. What this creates are the things like the Third Reich. Okay? The only difference between Hitler and the possession which has overtaken Jeff C. And the possession has taken Hitler, right? Is A, they didn't have the term narcissist back then. B, Jeff will never have the power that Hitler was given. Or maybe he will, if, you, if we keep allowing this to happen. Anyways, uh, might have another video or two on this, but I need to go back to worshiping the Lord, because I thank God every day that He has taken me out of this mind control. Um, I would never forsake that. And I would never, ever defend the actions of Jeff C. again. This has been Abidan. 
May God's peace, truth, and love be with you all. I love you all. Pray for Jeff C.